I'm Chase and this is All Things Rem. Today we're making a case for why quartz watches are better than automatics. Now of course we're not going to go to the extreme high-end tiers of quartz watches or the extreme high-end tiers of automatic watches. Today, we're gonna to stay between 50 and $500. Those are the watches we're gonna look at. However, we're gonna go up to $1,000 to show you why this automatic watch that hovers around $1,000 may be worse than just having a $100 quartz watch. Now, if you find that interesting, let's just flip the camera around and we're gonna dive right into the watches and the reasons that I'm talking about. Okay, so laid out in front of us are multiple different tiers of both quartz and automatic watches. The first thing that we're going to talk about is ease of use. Now, when I say ease of use, I mean how easy is it if you have more than one watch to use an automatic as opposed to using a quartz movement? Well, if you look right now at these three quartz movements, you'll notice something a little different than if you look at these three automatic movements. Now, neither one of these watches have been worn in the last one to two weeks. Maybe the Citizen Pro Master Diver because I was in the pool having some fun and I love to wear this as a dive watch. Other than that, do you notice something that's different about these watches as opposed to these watches? I'll give you just a second. Well, a second's gone by and if you don't notice, well, these are still basically on track. It is about 12.05 right now and you can see that the Matthew Tussaud is running a little fast. The Pagani design is basically right on time, and the Citizen Promaster Diver is about a minute behind. And you can see all of these are basically set to a different time, if running at all. Now, I gave them each a little shake, but you can see right here, like the Tissot Sea Star isn't running really at all right now. Um, it's not that it doesn't work, but we'll go into that later. They all technically work. In fact, let me give this a little shake. And you can see that that second hand right there by the nine is now moving. So first we're going to talk about ease of use, like I said. Now, I don't have to worry about these watches necessarily for maybe a few years. Now, they say batteries normally last about two to three years. Some even go as long as five years. However, if you have something like the Citizen, which has the Eco Drive, technically you don't have to replace the battery at all. You just need artificial or natural light, and this thing will stay charged. In fact, it has a sub dial right here at the nine o'clock position that both works as two different functions. It works as a function to tell you, boom, it's ready if it's in the water, and it also tells you it's sort of a power meter, and it tells you exactly where the power level is in the watch. It normally hovers around the top because I leave my watches out in the open. If I left this in the closet, it says that it has about a six month charge built in and then it needs to be in the light. This also works in a way because it has a computer inside of it that if the battery starts going lower, it'll save power by not ticking every second, but ticking every two seconds. So like my wife, she prefers quartz watches because she never has to worry about them. She's so inconsistent when it comes to actually wearing watches or wearing different watches that she doesn't want to have to pick it up and reset the time every single time. So, so far, these are slightly better because you only have to really set them every few years. Now, let's talk about the second factor. Well, the second factor is the fact that these are more accurate than these. Now people could say, well, that's really a moot point. Who cares if quartz watches are more accurate? These are better. Okay, are they better? Well, maybe more artistically designed, they are better. Maybe the pure fact that someone had to sit down and build a watch is better. It's a romantic thing that I'm going to talk about later that I love automatics more than quartz, but this is why quartz are better than automatics. Well, these you really don't have to set. And not only do you have to set them, but they also have sort of hybrid versions like this Pagani design that gives you both the feeling of an automatic watch and the feeling of a quartz, all that hassle-free of a quartz watch. And I'll show you what I mean. 
Well, you go ahead and unscrew this crown right here, press the button, and you can see that that second hand now ticks about five ticks a second. Now, a low beat movement or a we'll say 21,600 beat movement, ticks about six ticks a second. So this is one tick less a second. However, it gives you that feeling of a more smooth sweeping hand than the quartz second hand you see down at the six o'clock position. That's more indicative of quartz. However, this gives you the feeling that, well, it's a more of an automatic than just a quartz. So you get the best of both worlds. Also, when it comes to modding watches, now I have done a video and set in fact, several videos on this oil filled mathy to sew vintage quartz watch. Now I cannot fill an automatic watch with some sort of non-conducting oil like I did on this to give it a really cool, like LCD screen look from all angles. You can see it pushes the dial directly to the surface of that crystal. I can't do that with an automatic like I can do it with this quartz watch and i can tell you that people ask me oh is it is it slowed down now that now that it has oil inside of it is it causing some sort of friction and i'll be honest this runs again like i said about a minute faster in the last few months than my pagani design so in no way is it actually affecting the friction of the second hand inside or the movement perfectly okay now the third fact of why quartz watches are better than automatic watches well Quartz watches are more durable. Now, this watch I wore on patrol for quite a while after I got it. This has gotten beat up, banged, and you know what? It still looks pretty dang good. In fact, I've dropped this several times from a high distance. Now, I'm going to give you an example of my automatic Tissot Sea Star, and I know this would come. Now, this watch found itself at a high velocity across the garage, and it is damaged. Now I tell you it's damaged and it needs to be repaired because let's go ahead and move this and we're gonna line this up with the 15 because you can see that inside the dial and the movement is about a minute off, you know, counterclockwise in the uh, position. Now everything was lined up until this found itself at a high velocity across the garage. It wasn't me. Trust me. Now, what happened was when this impacted the wall, the crown stem broke and the entire movement shifted. Now, I have to get a new crown stem for it, and that's not really that expensive, and I could easily do it myself. However, I've just sort of put it off because this watch is extremely thick. It's extremely big. It is a dive watch. However, I just don't wear it as much because I have so many other watches, so I've just been putting it off. But this thing, if I take this to a watchmaker and have it repaired, it could cost me three, four, even $500 to repair. And the cost of the watch was, I think when I first purchased it from an AD, it was like $1,400. Now you can find them online for under a thousand. So basically I'm paying half the value of the watch just to keep it going. Now, will this watch last for a very long time? Yeah, if I keep it regularly serviced, it will stay for a long period of time. But are you willing to put $500 into repairing a watch that you rarely wear when you could buy another automatic watch? So that's sort of something to consider. Now, another thing we're gonna talk about is the price. The price of course watches are far less than the price of automatic watches. And I, and I have them set up in tiers right now. This is the cheapest at about $80. The Matthew Tissot was a, just over 100, maybe 110. And the Citizen Aqualand Promaster Diver from the authorized dealer was about $500. Now this automatic watch, which is Parnas that everybody's familiar with, the Parnas Datejust, was about $120. So you can see that this is already about 30 to $40 more than the cheapest one I have over here. And this one is far more accurate and it just looks overall better. And I feel this just has more going for it. Now, the Seiko VK63 movement inside this watch is not cheap, but it's also not expensive as opposed to the, the automatic movement in here. So they tend to take, if you pick the right watch company, they tend to take the extra money and they put it on something like the ceramic bezel, a sapphire crystal. So you're more likely to get just overall better design from a watch like this than a watch like this because if they want to make it marketable, 
they need to cut corners somewhere. This is no way a bad watch. This is actually a pretty great watch, and this is one of my favorite watches. This is one of the reasons why, in the future, I really do want to get a 36 millimeter Rolex Datejust because of this 36 millimeter Parnas Datejust. They just did such a good job at this watch that it makes me want to get a Rolex or something similar. Then you have something like the Matthew Tussaud, which was a little bit more, but still not that much. Now, if you look down at the bottom, this is a Swiss made watch. The Matthew Tussaud does have a Swiss quartz movement in it, which is overall better quality than a Chinese quartz or a Japanese quartz, or so they say. I don't really know. There are, everything is sort of debatable. Seiko has their mechanical quartz movements which are very durable, very robust in some of their, you know, better higher end dive watches. But those dive watches are over a thousand dollars for those dive watches. Whereas like this Citizen is again, only 500 bucks and it offers a depth sensor with a depth reading gauge. And this cannot be serviced by anybody but Citizen because of the computing system inside of this watch. Then if you look at something like my khaki hamilton big pilot day date now you can see right there it does have a cool day of the week function with the day of the month function right there at the three o'clock i really love this watch this is one of my first nice watches now i did have the rolex hulk prior but my wife bought this within our first year and i wore this for four years on patrol and this thing still looks amazing now i did drop this at about four feet on the concrete and it did dislodge part of the movement in the back and i had to go get it fixed and it was 200 dollars to repair it now that's not a service that's just a repair so it's something to consider when it comes to durability cost these are going to be more durable than these because these have far more things to go wrong if this has 222 moving parts and i just made that number up and this has three moving parts. This has 200 more moving parts that could go wrong. So just keep that in mind. Plus when it comes to, if you look at that balance wheel bouncing back and forth, now that's very easy to knock loose. That is set on a hairspring and it's oscillating, I think 21,600 beats an hour. So imagine if this gets a good jolt and it hits concrete, well, it could dislodge that, it could do some damage. It's not the same when it comes to quartz movements. Now, do I really think quartz is better than automatics? Well, not necessarily. I love automatic movements far more than I like quartz. The only reason I like this quartz movement more than almost any of my other watches is because of the functionality of it. However, if you look at something like the Grand Seiko Spring Drive, technically, that is a hybrid version of a mechanical watch and a quartz watch because it uses mechanical features to keep the quartz movement charged but it still is a technical quartz movement it uses a quartz crystal to regulate the second hand and it's extremely accurate now as a grand seiko cost more than all of this together absolutely would i buy a grand seiko spring drive hell yeah i would because i love that smooth sweep of that second hand it is so smooth and satisfying plus their finishing on their watches their dial finishing case finishing is second to none in fact they're far better than rolex and they cost half as much but here is my case for why quartz watches are better than automatic watches now all in all i am a huge sucker for automatic watches i don't care if they're less accurate i don't care if they're more delicate none of that stuff matters to me what i care about is the actual craftsmanship in the watch itself now my favorite quartz watch is the citizen pro master diver and that's not because it's a quartz watch if it was an automatic watch i would have chosen an automatic over the quartz however it does have a computer inside that gives me the depth reading when i'm diving or free diving or snorkeling so because of that i prefer that quartz watch over anything else but that's because it has an additional feature that my automatic watch just doesn't have overall again i prefer the craftsmanship of an automatic watch now i've talked in the past about how i just love the idea of this living thing on my wrist it's a romantic sort of thought that this being this device that's on my wrist that has 
over 200 moving parts that was placed together by an individual. Then you have the balance spring and the wheel that's beating back and forth at 28,800 beats per hour if you choose a higher beat movement. A lot of them are 21,600 beats an hour. However, you have this little thing, it's sort of like a beating heart, and the way it survives is either if you wind it or if you wear it. Now, the love of wearing the watch is what keeps it going, right? So to me, there's like a romantic quality when it comes to automatic watches, plus the craftsmanship. Now, if you guys agree with me, leave a comment down below on any of this stuff, whether or not you like quartz watches better or whether or not you like automatic watches better. Now, if you like videos and videos like this, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment down below with the content you guys would like to see on this channel. I have a lot of videos coming up in the future, so make sure you guys are hitting that notification bell so you can be notified when I drop that next video. Until next time.